example say God did such thing and God did not do such thing. God is such a thing and God is not. You cannot say that Jesus is a perfect God on the one hand and he is a perfect man on the other hand. You can't have it both ways. You cannot say I am almighty and I am not almighty. I am all knowing and I am not all knowing. What was Jesus? When we have a cursory glance at scripture, we know the following. Is there anyone that can be viewed as being greater than God? Anyone? Anyone? Can anyone be viewed as greater than God? Well, what does Jesus say? In John 14 verse 28, He says, My Father is greater than I. In Numbers 23 verse 19, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the Son of Man that he should repent. He says, My Father is greater than all. Are we able, is God able to do everything? Pick up your hands, how many of you say that God is able to do everything? We all accept that. But in John 5.30, Jesus says, Of myself, of myself I can do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father that sent me. There is another that bear witness. Another that bear witness. How many of you say that God knows everything? All of you. Jesus in Mark chapter 13 verse 32, He says, But of that day and that hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. You see, if the Son and the Father were one and the same, then how is it possible that the Father is aware of the last day, of the day of judgment, but the Son is not aware? Because then we went back to His human qualities. But if He's human, then how can He be divine? Because you cannot say He's not all-knowing and He's all-knowing at the same time. God speaks from Himself. Jesus in John 8, 26, Whatsoever I have heard these things do I speak. He hears these things and He speaks. The words He has heard are not mine, but the Father who sent me. He had given me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. Even if the Father Himself said, so I speak. Does God need to pray? Of course not. Jesus says, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And was He proclaiming to Himself? Why have you forsaken Himself? And what about this? All of you gathered here and you made your salah. You remember that? Yes. Look at Jesus. In the garden of Gethsemane, Matthew 26, 39. And he went a little further and fell on his face. He made sujood and prayed to God. Saying, oh my father, if possible, let this cup pass away from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. In other words, submitting his will to the will of Allah, to the will of God, as a Muslim would do. Give me another definition of a prophet. Give me another definition of a prophet. In Acts 2 verse 22, you hear the expression, Yea, men of Israel, hear these words, Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him, which God did. You see, if you were to look at Matthew, for example, 28 verse 18, Jesus says, All power is given unto me. All power, if you open up to which the pastor has made a reference to, if one has to look, open up Matthew 28, which you refer to as one of the critical verses, verses 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. You see, if he was God, then no one needs to give power to Jesus, because he would already have the power. But the fact that he is not God means God.
in the spirit of God, they will be the sons of God. In other words, every person who follows the will and plan of God is a godly person. In the language of the Jew, he's the son of God. In Matthew chapter 5 verse 17, you read the expression, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. We have seen therefore from that perspective that the Gospels of the New Testament, three of which do not call Jesus God, were written many years after Jesus lived on this particular word. The ancient Jews, for example, being the sons of God did not mean referring to it in any particular aspect as being divine. Even in John chapter 10 verse 30, where Jesus makes the expression, I and the Father are one, look at the context. And the context is that he was speaking about the oneness in purpose. Oneness in purpose, that once a believer has accepted faith, God sees to it that he remains in faith, and the messenger of God sees to it that he remains in faith. Therefore he says, I and the Father are one, meaning one in person, purpose, not one in divinity. Because you know one in divinity, then in the very next passage, you read the expression where Jesus says, or they pick up stones to stone him, he says, Is it not written in your law? I said, Ye are gods. In other words, if he, Jesus, called them gods, in other words, the prophet of God will call gods in the Old Testament, then why are you making a position with me when the only claim I'm making is to be the son of God? God has got many sons. It was an easy expression. It was not of any religious significance in any particular degree. So coming back to what I suggested and what I basically submitted is that I believe that the nearest or the best method or methodology in terms of which we could come to a closer understanding of Jesus is if we were to basically look at the Quran, understand the Quran and read the particular Quran. Even the idea of sinlessness if someone is sinless, if you make the expression that only Jesus is sinless, so all of you are in sin. Well, what about the story of the prodigal son? The story of the prodigal son is that the young man told his father, give me the money that I would get when you die. I want it now. Then he ran away and did terrible things. And when the evil son came back, the father welcomed him. And the good son complained. He said, I've never done anything wrong. And look how you treat my brother who was so bad. And what does his father say? The father said, see your brother was dead now and he's alive. So you see that the perfect man does not have any preference over the repentant sinner in Christianity. A perfect man is not better than a repentant sinner. It means nothing. Or the story of the lost sheep. Ask them to read it. So the idea when, when somebody says, for example, if it's saying, or if you have to make the claim that Jesus is God, the Quranic perspective is quite clear that he was a prophet of God, he was a mighty messenger of God, he was a prophet amongst all the other prophets, and his mission was indeed limited. His mission was limited. I'm not saying so, but Jesus says so. When he sent his disciples out on a mission of preaching and healing, he said, go ye not into the city of the Samaritans, but go ye rather unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And in Mark chapter 7 verse 26, when you find a woman comes up to him, Jesus says, It is not me to take the bread of the children and cast it unto those who are around you. Cast it unto dogs. Those who are the Gentiles. So his mission, according to the New Testament, was limited. In the Quran, we basically believe that his mission was also limited, but fundamentally we accept him. We accept him as our prophet. We make no difference between him or any other prophet from that particular perspective. So I want to conclude on this particular point. I'm simply trying to remind an individual. Don't close your mind. Don't make up your mind before you have all the facts. Most people will tell you, those who used to be Christians and become Muslims will tell you that look, I am a better Christian now than I used to be. Now I follow Christ, I did it before. That's what I tell you. The Bible, for example, will say, when Jesus told his disciples, when you greet one another, let your greeting be, peace be with you. He set the example, peace be with you. Who says that today? Generally, Christians, do they say that? Well, maybe once in a while, Muslims, wherever they go, they will say, 
Assalamu alaikum, peace be upon you. Jesus, when he prayed in the garden of Gethsemane, he put his forehead on the ground where he, being a man, prayed to God, not to himself. Who prays like that today? Jesus used to fast for more than a month at a time. Who fasts like this? Who is really trying to imitate Jesus? Somebody said sometime back to me, well, Muslims make Jesus out, they insult him and so on and so on. How? How is that possible? They would very easily tell you, Muhammad, Rasulullah, they would just as quickly say, Isa, Rasulullah, no problem. That applies to all prophets. If Allah himself wants to make distinctions amongst his prophets, that's his business, not ours. Treat them all with the same amount of respect and with the same amount of reverence. I end with a passage from the Quran in this particular short stanza in the short time that I've been given from Surah Maida, chapter 5. Verse 119, when you read, Paul and behold, Allah of God will say, O Jesus, the Son of Mary, did you say